Retreat. Retreat. Advance. Retreat. If you're a sophomore in high school, about six feet tall and growing, have some talent and want a college scholarship, the pressure starts early. Probably at a basketball summer camp. Get the ball, though. You can't look at the ball. You can't look at your own. This is arguably the best of the lot, five star on the outskirts of Pittsburgh. College coaches come here from all over the country to teach and to observe. And come up and power up. Players of very talent come to learn and to be seen. For eight days, 12 hours a day, there is nothing here but basketball. Look, which way do you go? Which way? Which way? Good job. Nice screen, nice job. Hey, you've got to talk, fellas. You're man of screening, you better tell them the screen's coming. Move lines, grab this group out of the The camp is run by Howard Garfinkel, known simply as Gar. He also publishes the High School Basketball Index, a report that rates high school players and affects their future success or failure. And so he has come to be known as the czar of high school basketball. And if you wonder who he is to have that kind of power, so did we. Nobody. I just paid my dues for 17 years. I had 58 coaches, 58 of my resident coaches in 17 years. That's three and a half a year. Coaches and counselors have gone on to pro and college coaching. We've got 75 NBA play, uh, people in the NBA from the camp, five-star camper graduates in the NBA, some of the biggest names in basketball. Top name, of course, Moses Malone. So now... So who am I? I'm nothing. But these are the people that have come out of my program. Would you have as much of a chance to be seen by college coaches and maybe to get a scholarship if you didn't come to Five Star? No, sir, the chance that I, I feel, as most people do, that the chances are much greater that here at Five Star. It's this abundance of coaches because... Mr. Garfinkel knows so many people, and so many people respect him. They know that if you come to this camp, you must have the credentials to possibly play college basketball. These kids are playing for high stakes, scholarship offers from Division I schools. At each camp session, as many as 200 college coaches will come here to judge their skills. It saves the coaches a lot of time, travel, and money and they get to see the players they're recruiting as they play against top competitors. What are you writing? What are you noting about these kids as you watch? What kinds of things? I'm going to write down some of the things I like about them. They're not good shooters, good rebounders, quick, not so quick. Those types of things. It's a good place to come to see some of the best in the country. Yeah, it's super. A lot of good players. Big cut. Jump stop. Of the 300 stop. players stop. attending this session, perhaps 20 fall into the super category and so have less worry about being recruited. But the majority are in a pressure cooker, a pressure made more intense by the fact that Garfinkel's rating report is sold to all the major colleges. Do we have any new subscribers this week for the service? Yes, we do. With three or four? The players are rated from one to five stars, five being the best. And once a player gets a bad rating, it's hard for him to overcome it. Drop step. Don't play behind them, Rich. They wouldn't use that move if you're playing behind them. You know, if you come here and try to learn as much as you can, I think you really improve a lot. You know, it's like uh, you can improve two stars. Definitely yeah. improve two stars. It's a lot of pressure. Uh, some people like pressure, though. You know, if you, if you can handle pressure, you can go to a big college, big time. If you can handle pressure, you know. Snap your butt. Get the ball. Here we were talking about pressure at an early age. Is that good for our kids, our society? I don't really think so. But uh, I don't make the rules. I just follow them. And these impressionable 17 and 18 year olds must be ready mentally and physically to help fill arenas seating anywhere up to 18 to 25,000 people as freshmen in college. So we're going back two years before that, and you're saying, is there too much pressure? Well, no, they have to get ready for that now. Profile. 
Get up again! And again! Garfinkel applies some of that pressure himself because his camp competes with others to get the top high school players. The top players attract more college coaches who in turn attract a host of average players who want to be seen and recruited. More kids mean more money for the camp owner. So Garth will recruit his kids early, and if a kid is willing to wait on tables, he can get a special deal. Yeah. I'll give you a waiter for that, too. Give you three weeks for half price All right. next summer. I'll call you during the winter. You think about, you know, if you want the two or the three. Three would mean the next, I don't want you three weeks in a row. It's too yeah. hard. But two here, and then either June or August in Honesdale. All if right. you have the car fit. Okay. You let me know. I'll call you up like December next year. All right. You let me know. Okay. Keep up the good work. Right. Okay. The basketball world is built on contacts, and there's no better place than this camp to make them. Hey, good morning, Coach. Good to see you. How you been? Glad to see you. What's up? This is a nice camp you've got here. Thank you very much. Here we go. What you see in this camp is a basketball ecosystem. A lot of different people living off each other. There are high school coaches who want to move into college coaching, high school referees trying to get a shot at a college game, owners of small summer camps who are looking to expand, pros, ex-pros, giving and receiving favors, even sneaker salesmen, this one from Nike. Uh, having our shoes on the athletes at a camp like this is very important to us because it gives us exposure to them and lets them know that we care about them as athletes. Now let's play it. Look at the rim. Something else you should know about giving and receiving favors, it is July, a time of year when the NCAA forbids contact between high school players and college coaches. Yet, here is Rick Patino, one of Garf's former campers, now a college coach, teaching at Five Star. And he is not the only one. Come on, five. Outlet, outlet. Now post up. Now post up. Now post up. Cross it. Cross it. Hard. For eight days, these coaches will be the most important people in the boys' lives, teaching, correcting, encouraging them. This closeness, the complaint goes, gives them a recruiting edge. If you start as a, as a camp or a counselor, he might keep you on if you, if you work hard at it. So it's an advantage I, I can say is a little deserved, and he just shows he thinks loyalty is much more important than the, than the advantage you get. But it's a legal advantage. We don't recruit kids here. We don't. Uh, I try... Uh, as much as possible, never even to refer to my school. Obviously, not to refer to my school. Of course, yeah. when you wear a jersey and trunks, well, it's um, a Boston I try to wear, I try to make it striped so it's tough to read. I see. Just last week, the NCAA ruled that camp owners who publish a ratings report can no longer hire college coaches. There is more going on at this camp than just business. It's safe to say that everyone here brings with him a love of the game. Basketball, basically, in a whole scheme of things, teaches the kids a lot of things that he's going to have to know the rest of his life. It's going to teach him how to work hard, and if you work hard work, be successful. It's going to teach him how to have some integrity, how to uh, deal with people, deal with a group of people, and, and, and create a cohesive unit like any other business or any other organization's going to be. So basketball is a game which you're going to have fun. And the higher up the level you go, I think, I think the game changes to be more intense and more organized. And uh, I think the higher level you go, I think you learn more. But basically, basketball is fun. It's a game. That's what I call it a game. The day began at 8. It will end around midnight. In the time between, there's practice, individual instruction, free play, weight training, game films, saturation basketball. Now here's what I think happens sometimes to good young players, and I'm addressing myself now, not to the guy that has to claw it out. To the guy who's going to be recruited and have his butt kissed by every college in the country is the guy I'm talking to. Jim Lynham, assistant coach with the Portland Trailblazers. Because I think I've seen them all. I've been watching basketball for like 25 years now, and I think I've seen every great player, most of the great players, let's say. If I asked you a question, my friend, and don't think I'm, I'm not trying to be smart with you, okay? We might not agree. Who is the biggest force the biggest force that ever played this game, and I don't think it's even close. Give me an answer. Of course, not Russell. No, yes, Chamberlain. Come on, man, let's go. You realize what the man did one year, fellas? He averaged 50 a game. 50. I saw him get 78 one night against the Lakers down in Convention Hall. One year he averaged, you ready? Averaged 28 rebounds a game. 
averaged. Fellas, when they let the big fella out of his cage, it was flapping time, Jack. Okay? The dream is being nurtured, a pro career. Reality is that 400,000 kids play high school basketball, 4,000 will make it to Division I, only 35 of them will make it to the pros each year. But even if they know those odds, by this time they've given up too much to turn back. My dream is to go big time, you know, just have fun. NBA? Big time NBA. College, Division Three. You know that. Division Two, Division One. Anyway. You know that almost. You know that just a very small number of kids yeah. ever make it to the NBA. You gotta have a dream, though. You know, you gotta have a dream. You tell a kid at age 17 that he's the greatest thing going since sliced bread, and everybody's doing this throughout the country to try to get him into the program. Pretty soon, the kids' values have to change a little bit. I don't care. It's human nature. If someone tells you you're a beautiful person every day of your life, you're going to start to believe it.